All right, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to buy land from a private seller. I've literally made my living buying land from private sellers as well as buying land that's not even for sale. And today, I'm gonna to peel back the curtain on exactly how me and my team does this every single day. <music> All right, in this episode, I'm gonna break down in seven steps how to buy land from a private seller and not give you just one, not two, but three giveaways to make your life easier in doing this every day. All right, so did the egg come first or did the chicken come first? Who cares? Um, you're buying land from a private seller. So does the seller come first? Do you know where the seller's at? Or are you trying to pick the land? You know the area you're gonna buy in or do you already have something that you're interested in? I'm not really sure where you're starting out, so I'm gonna talk about both of them. I talk about picking a playground, pick the area you wanna buy the land, and then find the seller, but you might already have a seller in mind if you're coming to this video searching for this, But so I wanna make sure I talk about both of them. So let's talk about pick your playground. I love being on the outskirts of growth. I call it the teeter-totter method. Like you're just on the outskirts of where all the building is happening, and I prefer, like that's my recreational land. I call that recreational land or land in the middle of nowhere. That is my bread and butter. That's where I shoot for. But how to buy land from a private seller? Most of the time, these are private sellers because most real estate agents don't mess with the stuff that's in the middle of nowhere, or maybe it's a lower price land and they're not willing to touch it because it's a lower commission. So, all right, you found the seller, you found the land. Let's plan from there. All right, so now you gotta get in touch with the seller. I wanna talk to you a couple ways. You know, first, the easiest way is probably going to the county assessor's website. You know, you can look up the land, you can find it on the GIS map. This is Golf India Sierra map, GIS map. You can kind of locate it from there and get the actual sellers information like their name the mailing address and you can simply send them a letter saying hey I'd like to purchase your land on Main Street uh, I see you have a couple acres there call me if you're interested here's my phone number or maybe you just want to cut right to the chase they got a mailing address on there this might be their home address you can literally go in knock on that door. I mean, that's how I did my first several real estate deals was door knocking until I got a little nervous about it. And then I just started putting little postcards. And I'm not saying don't be nervous. I just was having a bad day and I just left some postcards or left some sticky notes, not postcards, sticky notes on the door and it worked. It totally worked. Let's do another option. Maybe you're not in the same state or city or county. How do you get in touch with these people? How do you get their phone number, their email, or the latest mailing address. And that's using the link that I give you in the description, but it's batchleads.io forward slash TLS, as in the land sharks. Batchleads.io forward slash TLS, or you can just use a coupon code TLS. And that's gonna get you 5,000 free records, 5,000 of your first searches for free on me. All right, so when you're going out and you get these, these phone numbers, and you plan to text these people or call them, I want you to run this by the state do not call registry. Be very careful about this. You know, I want you to run this list through the state do not call registry. You wanna make sure that there's no like professional complainers or I call them professional litigators or do not call status complainers. I once was sued by a realtor that was also an attorney for three text messages and one phone call. This cost me $10,000 plus fighting this guy because he got on my list and he I was also running this with another company and we missed him. We totally missed him. He was a professional litigator. This guy served me and ended up suing me and it took about a year and a half, but for three text messages and a phone call. So I want you to be very careful when you're calling people and texting people because you don't want to get caught up in this, especially when you're first starting out. All right, the third step that's not illegal to do and that's mail. Send a simple postcard saying, hey, I'd like to buy your land on Wachula Street. Uh, if you're interested in a fair cash offer, call me. And hey, here's that free giveaway I was talking about. It's below in the link. Basically, there's a link below in the description and it's called called thelandsharks.com, thelandsharks, plural, dot com, forward slash postcard. I've been using this postcard now for six years and it's made me millions of dollars. All right, 
So after you send this postcard, it's gonna get you a lot of phone calls. You need to be prepared to answer the phone. But before you do that, let me take a step back. I might've gotten a little ahead of myself. Got a little too excited about this postcard. You wanna edit this postcard, take my information off of it and put your information on it. You wanna have a return address that's not your home address. You never want people showing up unexpectedly. You know, it's kinda of like your mother-in-law just randomly shows up. This is worse. This is a total stranger that you just mailed and you could have pissed them off. You know, you want to have like a virtual mailbox, like just Google virtual mailbox or a post office box that's super cheap, super inexpensive. Go with the least expensive. I want you to keep revenue in the first position. I want you earning money. I want you bringing income in before you start spending too much of it. Also, don't put your cell phone on this. You know, go and get a Google voice number or a number from callrail.com or justcall.com. I mean, you can get a phone number for like $9 a month. All right, back to step number four. You gotta be ready to communicate. You're gonna get a lot of phone calls. You need to return to those phone calls, and I prefer live answer if at all possible. But here's the thing about live answer. You don't wanna do it when you're busy or with your children or pushing your kids on the swing set. You gotta be in the moment, be prepared. Don't be afraid to let these things go to voicemail, but make sure you call them back. Like, I don't want you constantly sitting there waiting for a phone call, because you got a life to live, people to live it with. But be prepared, be ready to talk to them. And I even give you a script. I'm gonna give you that script today in the description below, and it's thelandsharks.com forward slash script. Thelandsharks.com forward slash script. All right, so you've communicated with the seller, you used the script that I gave you, used the postcard to get them to call you, now what? Now you gotta get this thing on a purchase agreement. I call this a purchase agreement, I don't like to call it a contract, because no one wants to hear that word contract, but a purchase agreement, that sounds like a great thing. That's an agreement between you and the seller, you're gonna purchase their land, and everything's gonna be wonderful. So I'm gonna give you another free gift. The free gift is below in the description, but it's thelandsharks.com forward slash contract. And yes, I call it contract here because purchase agreement was just too long. All right. I know I'm providing so much value. No one else is doing this on YouTube. I'm giving all my land secrets away. I've been building this business for six years and I'm giving it all away on YouTube. Definitely subscribe to this video, like this video and comment. That is your good faith payment today. And I guarantee you it's going to bring you good luck in your life. So definitely we're going to go through the steps one more time. It's a three-step process. Subscribe, like, comment. And what's that comment? It could be a smiley face and I'll probably reply back. I love you. All right. We're in six, six out of seven. You're almost there. You've made it further than most. All right. Six is let's start our due diligence and get that purchase agreement over to the title company so they can open the title and start searching for the title, making sure that there's no liens or encumbrances or crazy IRS tax liens. I once purchased the property or I bought the property, but luckily I didn't record the deed and I did not use a title company. Just so happened there was a $179,000 IRS tax lien on this property. And thank God I didn't uh, record that deed in my name because I would have probably inherited this. Luckily, I was able to get it worked out about a year later, but this was a long process. So I don't want this to happen to you. So if I can help you avoid any of these traps, these pitfalls, that's what I'm here to do. So get it over to the title company and also start your due diligence. And you might be thinking, well, what do I do? What's due diligence? Well, it's a, basically another word for research. And I'm gonna give you another free gift. It's below in the description and it's thelandsharks.com forward slash DD as in due diligence. And I actually break this down in another video, but I'm gonna give you this link today to where you can go and do the due diligence. It's my 14 item due diligence checklist and it's what my team uses on every parcel of land we've ever purchased and it was built off of making mistakes on buying land. All right, I wanna make one more final point on point six before I go to final point on point seven and that is do not give your seller the earnest money deposit. Give that to the title company because the earnest money deposit is refundable during your inspection period. So if you find something weird like there's a turnpike or something or a toll roll going through your land and you don't wanna buy that, then the earnest money deposit would be refundable and that's with the title company. It's, a, it's like an escrow account. Um, it's a third party and it's not going to the seller. Because as soon as you give the seller an earnest money deposit, consider it gone. You better be buying the property or losing your earnest. And finally, step number seven, time to celebrate. I call all closing celebrations. You fund the deal, go to the title company, sign your pretty signature, take possession of your land, 
and celebrate. You know, do something. Camp on it. Have a fire. Roast marshmallows. I took my kids camping a couple years ago. They don't talk about the cool uh, snowmobiles that we rode or got to see. Um, they talk about roasting marshmallows over the fire. That's the memory that they remember, and that's all good. You know, build memories that last a lifetime. All right, so I hope those seven steps were super valuable, and I hope that you took me up on those three-step process. You know, subscribe, like, comment. And if you haven't done it, it's not too late but I know it will definitely bring you good luck for doing it. Definitely that comment needs to be a smiley face and my reply will be, I love you. So you're doing so much value by buying land from a private seller. You know, you're getting deals done. You're oftentimes, I find that when we buy land from a private seller, we're, we're getting the monkey off their back. We're saving them from a burden or they've been paying the back taxes for many, many years. So they're just very thankful for us buying this land from them. So at the end of the day, you're doing a great service. I just wanna share a story of my dad actually purchasing a parcel of land from a mother. Basically, she had inherited this land many years ago and she'd been paying the back taxes and it was time for her to sell it. But this was a time during Christmas that she was just one of those people that loves to buy gifts for the entire family. And that's why she was selling this land. She wasn't selling it to make a, a ton of money or to get rich. She wanted to bless other people's lives by selling this land. So buying land from private sellers is a great thing to do. Glad you're searching this video and I'm hoping I helped you out. I've built a business behind this, around this. This business is providing me so many things like financial freedom, time freedom, because we sell a lot of our properties on notes. Like we actually sell our finances and I have over a hundred of these paying me every single month. That gives me the time freedom, the financial freedom, the geography freedom to go and travel and spend time with a family or just go on vacation, whatever we choose to do. So as you know, the real estate market is absolutely exploding right now. And I have an absolute tried and true method of buying and selling over 271 parcels of land in the last six years. If you're interested in checking that out and building a business that serves you, your family and others, head on down to the landsharks.com. The link is once again, below in the description. And you know, check us out, schedule a call, talk to my team, and if you feel like we're a great fit, I'd be honored to coach you.